Hot on the heels of the Pixel Fold, Samsung's Galaxy Z Fold 5 enters the fray as the most anticipated foldable smartphone of 2023. But the question remains, will it survive our teardown? Thanks to our friends over at Creative Electron, we can get a preview of what we're going to find on the inside. There's a lot packed in here, half of which seems to just be the battery. Time to get a closer look. With an IPX8 rating, the phone can be submerged to depths of over a meter. The X in that IPX8 means that it has not been tested for dust ingress. That's okay though, because we're going to do our own test, which I'm calling the Mars Dust Simulator. Rusty, dusty, and a little bit crusty. Samsung introduced gearless hinges with the Z Fold 4, and I'm assuming I'll find a similar gearless hinge in here. Gears or no, I can definitely hear some creaking in that hinge. And shining a UV light over the edges of the screen and the hinge suggests that the dust probably did make its way inside. Time to dive in and find the rest of my green dust. Clampy's gonna help us remove the back panel. Fun fact, our picks lead a double life as musical instruments. They're sometimes used to dismantle guitars when they're not working on teardowns. The front panel was way harder to remove for some reason, but it came away eventually. The trick is to get the screen off without breaking it. Once you figure that out, you'll have a repairable phone. Shining the UV light over the two halves shows that the glue did a good job of keeping the dust out. I honestly wasn't surprised by this, that adhesive is pretty standard for old smartphones. I'm gonna make my way around and remove as many screws and as much plastic as I can. This gives me access to the speaker assembly at the bottom, the battery, screen, daughterboard, interconnect cables, the daughterboard itself, and that beautiful pull tab battery. Let it be known, removing this battery was a much easier experience than the pull tab battery on the S23 Ultra. Turning over to the other half of our two-part device, let's disconnect that wireless charging coil and get to those screws holding the plastic mid-frames and interconnect cables. There's a few cables here. One is a battery cable connector to the battery on the other frame. We've got the battery cable from this side of the frame, daughterboard interconnects, and the display panel cables, among others. There's a lot packed in here. The inner front facing camera comes away easily enough and it's onto the main board and rear facing triple camera assembly, which comes away as one. Turns out that the cameras aren't a single assembly. Each camera comes away separately. The smaller PCB at the bottom also comes out. Note that we don't have a modular USB-C port. Those ports wear out eventually. And we move on to our second pull tab battery. I had a slightly harder time with this one, but I'll put that down to sweaty fingers. Let's take a closer look at those batteries now that we have them out. The larger one has a capacity of 8.96 watt hours, while its smaller colleague is rated for 7.6 watt hours for a total of 16.56 watt hours. That represents a roughly 3% decrease over the Z Fold 4's 17.06 watt hour combined capacity. Now here's the part that's never been DIY friendly on the Samsung foldables, the inner screen bezel. Unlike the Google Pixel bezel, Samsung has again opted for the clipped in and highly breakable bezel design. It's not fun removing these, but we put our heads together and came up with a system. Lift the edge with the sharp end of the tweezers and slide a pick to release a section at a time. With that annoyance out of the way, I place the phone face down on the heating pad for a good 20 minutes. Now here's where the Z Fold 5 did better than the Pixel Fold. The glue doesn't extend across the entire underside of the foldable screen. This is still not a user serviceable part, as the chance of breaking the screen remains high, but at least Samsung found a way to reduce the amount of adhesive used. One day, that may count for something in the foldable category. Finally, the hinge mechanism of the Z Fold 5 bears all. 
And look at all that simulated Martian dust. Boy, did that make its way in without much hassle. As expected, Samsung has iterated on their gearless design. The hinge is designed in such a way to push debris out of the way instead of getting caught in the mechanism. And there you have it, the Galaxy Z Fold 5 broken down for all to see. It's clear that Samsung continues to iterate on its previous hinge designs in an attempt to address the most common failure point on foldables, that flexible screen. But until there's some protection against dust ingress and a durable solution to protecting the ultra-thin glass that doesn't rely on a plastic screen protector, I'm afraid this whole flexible screen thing will get a hard pass from me. Still, there's no doubt that the foldable market is growing. Hopefully that growth will translate to innovation that brings us both durability and repairability in the foldable screen space.